Hi and welcome to another training video. It's amazing what self-isolation does to people and for some people it makes you curious and you wonder what you can do and then you start having a play and then you start doing stuff. Um, now the other day I was watching a video by Mike Gervin uh, from Excel is Fun and what he was doing was he was looking for certain things within some text data and when you find them, he was listing them off to the right hand side, transposed. Now what a beautiful and elegant solution he had there. But what I saw on his screen when he was demonstrating it was that the thing he was looking for was coloured in differently. So it was formatted with some text formatting, but just on the thing that he was looking for. And I thought, wow, he's got some magic way of doing conditional formatting for the text within the cell. And I thought, this is fantastic, I'm going to learn how to do this. And as it happens, I did learn how to do it. But that's not what his video was all about, but it is what this one is all about. So let's take the example that I've worked up. So I'm going to do where this field here will have some formatting on it for the text. And that's what I'm going to look for over here and wherever it finds it, it's going to colour it in with the same formatting as is on this one. And then it's going to go to the next one and look at the formatting here. And then look at all of these cells and wherever it finds whatever that text is, it's going to apply whatever that formatting is. Now it's only doing the font formatting because it's only going to find the font of the, the text within here. If I applied a cell format on here, it'd be pointless because I put the cell formatting on here. Okay, so let's have a look at how this works. So, and get to my code. What I've got here is I've got a routine that's going to change the text color of just the found text. So, first thing I'm doing here is finding the cell that's currently selected. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because if the user is in a certain cell when they go and click on my magic button I want the machine to have that cell selected after it's run the code so I need to know what cell they've got selected so that I can go back to it and you'll notice right at the bottom of my code I go back to that current cell which I've found the address of up here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and find these two named ranges so I've got name head and I've got data head as named ranges. And what I'm going to do is look for the range of that named range. So my named range is name head, which is just that cell there. And if I do a control A on my screen, it selects the cell below. But actually, if I had other cells below with something in them, when I select that one and do control A, it will select all of them. So what this is doing is it's actually selecting however many items down here I'm looking for. And the same over here. So I'm going to find that cell there, which is a named region or named range. And it's then going to find all of the cells down below. And now here's where it does something clever, because what my code actually does, if I switch back to the code, is it finds the range name head, and then it finds the current region of it, and then what it does is it uses the create names function using the thing at the top as the name for the region. So what that's going to mean is that this thing here, the word my names, whatever text I've got in there, is going to become the named range of the region for however many things it finds underneath. So not the whole range, including the header, but just the ones underneath. And that's quite useful because I'm not looking for the words my names in the data over here. I'm just looking for the items I've typed in in the data over here, not including the header. So that's just how that bit there works. Um, what I'm then doing is I'm counting how many rows and columns there are within those new sets of data. So for example, here, I'm only counting the rows because the, the items I'm searching for only are individual items. Yep, so it's searching just down the rows. But I've set it up so that my data could be multiple columns as well as multiple rows, or just one of each. Um, 
So that's what those few lines do. And then I set up the first of the loop and I go to the my names, which is the things I'm looking for. And I start there and I run the loop through. So I'm setting up the my name and that's saying this is the first one. So it's the name loop and it's the first one in the name loop. And I'm looking for the value of it. So back over here, it'll find the first thing in here. So let's say that's going to be Bill. And underneath I'll have Joe and underneath I'll have Fred. Okay, so I've got the three things there within my named region. It's going to start at the first one and find the first one. It's now going to start looking over here at the data. So I'm going to say Uh, let's just change that one. Joe or Fred, that can be Bill again, and this one. Let's make this one something different. Let's make this one Mary. Okay, so I've deliberately put them in a different order, so we're not necessarily just seeing that we're looking for them over there. What it's actually going to do is it's going to look for this thing in all of that data. And wherever it finds it, it's going to change the formatting of this, of where it finds it to match what the formatting is over here. So I'm going to make that one red and now it's going to run through and look through everywhere here and find Bill. So it's going to find Bill once there and once there and it's going to format just the word Bill with whatever the formatting is over here. Boom. Now it actually ran through Bill and Joe and Fred and wherever it found them it just changed the formatting to whatever it is over here, but because I hadn't applied any formatting over here, it didn't make a difference. But you'll see if I do apply some formatting over here, run my code again, now Joe and Fred have picked up their colours as well. Now Mary hasn't changed colour because Mary doesn't exist in my list. So if I add Mary onto the list and then put some formatting on for her, as soon as I hit the button, boom. Mary's now got a blue colour. And of course I could, over here, type in Mary, run the code again, and it's now coloured in Mary over here as well. Okay, if you want a copy of this code, just give me a shout, and what I will do is I will, if enough people are asking for it, I'll put up a link in the comments, I'll put it up in the description of this video, and you can download it. Otherwise, you're more than welcome just to get in touch with me, uh, put a comment here, and I will send you a copy of the code if you give me your email address. Okay. I hope you found that useful. Once more, thank you for listening.